Sprouts and Pebbles, welcome back for another worship experience. Who remembers our theme for the month? Yep, that's right, focus. Take a closer look. As you probably remember, our word for the month is what? Faith, that's right, you guessed it. I have a huge favor to ask. Parents, can you please hit the share button so we can share this amazing experience with more families? I want to know you're having a good time with me today in the Sprouts House, so make sure to tell your parents to use the emojis in the comments section. I want to see even more people worshiping God than we had last week. But before we get started, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for another day to come and worship you, God. We thank you for everyone who is watching today. We thank you, God, for the word that you're gonna give us, and we thank you for loving us, God. We're asking all of these things in Jesus' name, amen. Today is a very special day. It's Father's Day, so make sure you wish your father or someone you look up to like a father a happy Father's Day. I want to give a special big shout out to all the fathers out there. Thank you for all you do in your homes, and in the community. I saw some wonderful posts about the worship experience last week. Big shout out to Tristan who recorded himself doing the movement for the word faith. Good job, nephew. If today is your first time worshiping with us, welcome. We are so glad that you are here with us. Don't forget to ask your parents to share pictures of your family watching our worship experience on social media using the hashtags Sprouts House Brook Fam and Brook Pebbles. We want to include those pictures during our pre-show. It's my favorite time of Sprouts House Live. Time for praise and worship. So you know what to do. Clap your hands, stomp, get your praise on. Okay, praise them with me.
so amazing. Woo, that's why I praise them. They don't know where we done came from. On my mama, they can't harm us. Got my arms up, but we covered in that armor. And we done made it. Y'all ain't hear me, but we made it. I ain't learn it, but I take it. Got that light inside of me that you don't need no eyes to see. And you can feel it, you can hear it when I say, hey, hey. I know many of you were out there getting your praise on. God loves when we are giving him praises. We are still in our theme, focus, take a closer look. And our word for the month is faith. You got it, faith. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Our Bible verse for the month can be found in Hebrews 11 and one. It says faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. Mr. Craig reminded you last week that developing faith is a lifelong effort. Sometimes we have to have faith that God will bring us out of tough situations. Today we're continuing to talk about Saul, who was also known as Paul. Last week, we talked about how Saul had been traveling to Damascus. He had special permission for the high priest to arrest anyone who followed Jesus and take them back to Jerusalem. Saul was definitely a scary guy to the people who followed Jesus. He was determined to stop their movement and keep them quiet. But as Saul traveled to Damascus, something happened, something big. Jesus himself appeared to Saul in a flash of light from heaven and it blinded Saul. Jesus told Saul to go into Damascus and wait there to be told what to do next. The men traveling with Saul led him into town where he stayed at the house of a man named Judas on Straight Street. There was a man in Damascus who was a Jesus follower. His name was Ananias. Ananias didn't know it yet, but he was about to become a real hero. God called out to Ananias in a vision and told him to go find Saul. God said, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street. Ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying in a vision, Saul has seen a man come and place his hands on him. That man's name is Ananias. In the vision, Ananias placed his hands on Saul so he could see again. Needless to say, Ananias was shocked and a little scared about the idea of going to see this man Saul, because again, Saul was scary. In fact, Ananias even told God he had heard reports about Saul and how Saul had come to Damascus to arrest believers. But God explained that he had a plan. God said, go. I have chosen this man to work for me. He will announce my name to the Gentiles and to their kings. He will also announce my name to the people of Israel. God told Ananias that he had a plan for Saul to become a hero too. Ananias still must have felt afraid, but he believed God and did what God said. He went to the house and found Saul. Saul hadn't had anything to eat or drink for three days. Ananias placed his hands on Saul. He told Saul that he knew he had met Jesus on the road to Damascus. Something like scales dropped from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. Now, here's something you should know about Saul. He was a relentless guy, the kind of person who never gives up. Before Saul met Jesus on the road to Damascus, he was relentless in his plans to wipe out the people who believed in Jesus. But now that he was a follower of Jesus himself, he was just as determined to share the good news with everyone. Nothing was going to stop Saul from his new mission. Within days, 
he began preaching in the Jewish synagogues. He taught that Jesus is the Son of God. Everyone who heard him teach was amazed. The Jewish leaders in Damascus were angry because Saul was stirring up the people. This put Saul in danger. The leaders wanted to capture and kill him to stop his new mission. But a group of Saul's followers had a heroic plan of their own. When they heard that the religious leaders were out to get Saul, they helped him escape at night. They lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall. Saul returned to Jerusalem and he tried to join the believers there. But there was just one problem. They were still afraid of him. To them, he was still scary Saul, who was relentless in his plans to hurt people who followed Jesus. One man, Barnabas, had already heard Saul's story, and he stepped in to help Saul. Barnabas took Saul to visit Peter, James, and other leaders in the early church, and he told them the whole story. He told them how Saul was a changed man, and now he believed in Jesus. Barnabas helped the Jesus followers see that Saul was one of them, and they welcomed Saul into the family. Saul stayed with the believers in Jerusalem, and he preached there just as boldly as in Damascus. Once again, a group of Jews became upset with him. But once again, the believers helped Saul escape. This time, Saul traveled back to his hometown of Tarsus to wait for God's next directions. Barnabas, Ananias, and the other believers helped Saul to share the message of Jesus with people. As a result, the group of believers across Judea and Samaria continued to grow through the power of God's Spirit. It wasn't easy for any of them. It must have been really scary for the believers to trust Saul after all they had heard about him. It also wasn't easy for Saul because he knew that sharing the message of Jesus might put him in danger. Still, Saul, Ananias, Barnabas and the other believers had faith in Jesus. They trusted him no matter what. They were courageous because they knew our bottom line for this week. Knowing Jesus can help you face your fears. It can be really hard to do the right thing when you're afraid. But like Saul and the other believers, we can stand strong because knowing Jesus can help you face your fears. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for our story today. Thank you for all that we learned. We thank you, God, that we can be courageous in everything that we do because we can remember the people in this story like Saul and Barnabas. Lord, we thank you and help us to be courageous in all that we do. God, we just want to say thank you to all the fathers out there and happy Father's Day to all the fathers, God. Thank you for them, for them being courageous for our families and them being courageous in the community. God, we just also want to say Happy Father's Day to our leader, Pastor Sim. God, thank you for loving us and help us to have faith, Lord God, even in the things that we are worried about, even the things that we can't see. But we know that you are always with us. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today, Sprouts and Pebbles. But before you go, remember, wrap your arms around yourself and squeeze real tight. And that's a big hug from me to you. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye.